What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the SAB Kraken 580 build. So in part three, we went over completely building the head assembly, the tail boom assembly, all that stuff that is done, we set it aside. So now we are back on the mainframe assembly and we are going to get the motor mounted, installed, belt driven, tail boom on, all that good stuff. So we are on page 23 of the manual. We have our motor out. This is the X Nova 4025 1Y 1120KV. Now this is a six millimeter shaft motor but and your your motor pulley is a six millimeter but like on the kraken 580 build there's a little spacer that allows you to use a five millimeter motor shaft but if you're using a six millimeter motor shaft you don't have to worry about it everything lines up perfectly so let's get the screws out let's get the camera on a tripod and let's get to installing this motor so we have all the parts laid out here now first thing i want to touch on is you're going to get two different length little set screws all right, you're gonna get a very small one and then a bigger one. Now they're both countersunk set screws and roughly the same length. Now the difference is for what motor you are using. We are gonna be using these bigger socket-headed cap screws, or yeah, socket-headed cap screws, countersunk. These little guys right here in front of this one are for a different smaller thread size. Also, if you notice on the motor itself, you have two different, two different size holes. We'll notice that this one fits into here. And then if you grab one of these little guys, which are a two millimeter driver, you'll notice that these little guys will fit into the smaller holes. So it just depends on which bolt pattern you're using and which motor you're using. I'm gonna go with the bigger ones, but you can also go with the smaller ones. So now we're gonna grab our motor plate. Now this will be in package foam one. You're gonna have this little aluminum motor plate. Now just like the crack in this is the, or just like the raw, I'm sorry, this is gonna be the same style motor plate. It probably is the same plate, it looks the same. But you're gonna have two studs in the back. And you're gonna have these little cutouts in the front. Now this, where these studs are, are the back of the helicopter. So we have the helicopter frame assembly. This motor plate's gonna fit down in here, something like that. Of course, it's gonna slide under and slide back and forth for adjustment of the belt. So when positioning the motor, at least for me, I want the wires to go to the front. So I'm gonna position my motor this way. So it's gonna be very simple. And we are going to line up. We're gonna be using the bigger screws. We're gonna line those up. And I mean, it's just gonna run it that simple. Run our screws down, just like this. Of course, blue Loctite on the screws. Two and a half millimeter driver. a Little bit of Loctite. And we're just going to go through, run all these screws down, tighten them up, and then move on. So now we have the pulley to put on. Now, note you have two set screw holes. You have a set screw hole here and a set screw hole here. They are pretty much 90 degrees from each other. Your motor is going to have a flat spot. So you have a flat spot here. So now when you slide your motor pulley down on, okay, you want to make sure that your main set screw bites that flat spot. Now, if you're really picky, you can go ahead and grind another flat spot in, but it's not needed. And I just locked down that one. So we're gonna, we're gonna space it, of course, get your Loctite on your set screw. We're gonna use, there's two size set screws. There's a longer one and a shorter one. For the main side with the flat spot, you're gonna wanna use the longer set screw. So we're gonna space it about about there, I think that's where I had it on the, it was a couple millimeters down from the end of the, or the tip of the shaft. So you're just gonna run this in, and now keep it aligned, and just like anything, you can, you can feel when it bites. So we're gonna put it about here, and when it bites, rock it back and forth. Doesn't slip, and then lock this one down. Now you're gonna have your other one to put in, so you're gonna grab your other set screw here, again, two millimeter driver, dab a Loctite and run that one down. And this one's not, does not matter because there's no flat spot, so you don't have to be picky. Now, of course, if you want to be picky and you want to grind a second flat spot, you can, but it is not needed because this set screw is what does all the biting. So let's go back and double check. We are tight on both sides. Take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, wipe off the excess Loctite, and let's move on. So now you're gonna have this one random screw in your bag and it's just a regular uh, socket headed cap screw 
and this screw is going to only be here for adjustment purposes and then this screw comes back out and it gets stuck to the motor so we are going to put this screw into this first hole right here we're only going to thread it in a little bit we're just going to run it till the threads are flush on the other side about there and that's it no loctite no nothing that's there's a screw so we can pry against when we put the motor on now you're going to grab your two flat washers you are going to drop them down here and here you're going to take your lock nuts no loctite nothing because these are lock nuts you don't need any of that so we are going to just get these where they hit the locking part and then just stop that's all we need and then when you go to put the motor plate in, you flip it upside down, slide it in. So now we can move on to the ESC tray. So now you're going to grab your little plastic tray and then your carbon fiber plate. Now there is two countersunk recessed areas here and there's nothing else. So this is going to be this part go towards the motor. So if you're looking at your motor mount, this is going to fit into here, something like that. And then this is going to go onto here like this. So it's gonna go like that, recessed in. Now no Loctite, no nothing, because they are lock nuts. So you're gonna grab your little set screw that is countersunk. You're gonna grab a two millimeter driver. Just go ahead, get one started. Grab the next one, get it started, and then tighten them both down. So now you're going to feed your motor wires through this little plastic bracket and then this is going to go underside of it like this. Now you notice there's two holes per side but there's only one hole for your bolt to go through. That is for what pulley you are running. Now this is a factory pulley, it is 22 tooth. So if you are running a 18, 19 or 20 tooth motor pulley, you're going to use the inside hole. So this hole and this hole. If you're using a 21, 22, 23, or 24, you're gonna use the external hole. Since we're running a 24, we are gonna use an external hole. So it is a two and a half millimeter driver. You're just gonna go ahead, get that screw down in there, get it started. Oh, knock into the camera while you're doing it. Get it out and then go ahead and do the other side. And then go ahead and tighten them down. Again, no Loctite. These are going into lock nuts. So you don't use Loctite on anything going into a lock nut because the Loctite will eat the plastic and tighten these down like so. Again, outside hole for a 22 or 21, 22, 23, and 24 tooth pinion. Tighten them down and you should have something that looks like this. So now we can move on to mounting this in the frame assembly. So now we have the main frame assembly here and we have the motor mount assembly that we just got done putting together. So now what I was talking about, I turn this over. This is just the way I found to do it. It makes life easier. And I slide this up through here. So the washers are on the top and that way when I flip it over, you see the washers are on the top and we are good to go. So now you're gonna grab bag 17, which is gonna be a, the bag with the belt and two more screws and two beauty washers. So now they're gonna be these screws and you've already put the beauty washers on. So now you are going to grab your screw and run it into here like this and tighten it down, do the same on the other side and then we'll move on to putting the belt on. So the camera quit recording and did not record what I was doing, so I apologize for that. But you're just simply going to slip the belt on, push the motor all the way back, put the belt on. You're going to use, I just used a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver, and you're going to rest it in between this nut or bolt here, and you're going to just pry. I also used a little bit bigger one when I got to the final step of tightening, and then I held the helicopter with one hand, pushed hard on it, locked these two two and a half millimeter bolts down on each side and then came back and locked the two lock nuts down and then tested belt tension. And you don't want it to be hard, but you want it to be tight and that's a pretty good uh, tension. And then you're gonna wanna spin the helicopter around and make sure that the belt is riding pretty good in the pulleys. And now we can move on to installing the ESC. So now we are running the Hobbywing 120 
And if you watch the raw 580 build, you'll notice or you'll remember that the two top holes line up, but the bottom holes do not. So we're going to get two screws put in the top holes, mark and drill two holes in the carbon plate for the hobby wing. If you wanted to center it more, you could drill all four new holes or you could just go to the bottom and do it up. But I did it like this last time and then run the ESC wires down and through here, but we'll get to that. So let me get these two holes drilled and get this ESC mounted. All right, so we ended up getting the ESC mounted, drilled the two new holes in the front, lock nuts on the bottom, ran all the wires, battery wires, same way I did on the uh, raw 580, battery wires this side, motor wires will tuck up and around to the motor on the inside, real nice and clean. So we're gonna set that assembly aside. Now, we are gonna go ahead and install the 580 belt tensioner set part number h1234-s so this is an added option that you can purchase this is not included in the kit david wanted it so we're going to install it so now it's a very simple install the kraken 580 does not have a belt tensioner it just you pull the belt tight and you let it ride this is not i wouldn't call this a tensioner more of just like an idler pulley because it doesn't it's not adjustable so i mean your adjustment is this so you have two different thickness plates here you have a two millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter so they're a half millimeter difference and you put whatever one you want for the different tightnesses so it tells you here that there are two levels of tension choosing between the two millimeter or the 2.5 millimeter carbon arm arm so we are just going to go ahead go for broke and we're going to throw the two and a half millimeter in we do have full adjustment on the back of the helicopter so we are good to go now you have this little plate here with lock nuts this is going to sandwich on the inside of the frame but the very first step is to grab we're going to grab the two and a half millimeter so it's going to be the thicker one we're going to grab this one we have two holes in the back two in the middle and one in the front the two holes in the back go towards the back of the tail of the helicopter so we're gonna grab some uh, loctite because we are or I'm sorry they're asking for retaining compound retaining compound and going into the tensioner is a threaded aluminum block so you do not need to worry about a lock nut so we are going to just simply grab our tensioner bracket this carbon two and a half millimeter and here is our what they're calling a tensioner and I'm gonna call it an idler pulley so it's going to go on this way and we are going to just run one screw in like this now there is three there's five screws total in the pack uh three of them are the same length two of them are shorter the two shorter ones which are a two millimeter driver we got the old cheapo amazon set of drivers right now we need to get a couple more mip drivers because these cheap ones suck so you're gonna run this down and screw this into place, tighten both screws down. So now when you tighten both these screws down, of course, go back in like an X pattern and tighten, tighten. Now you're locked down, we'll clean the, the excess off with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Now we don't need this plate, set that aside. Now you're gonna have your sandwich plate. So you're gonna grab your helicopter. So we're gonna lay it down like this. We are going to get a screw ready. Again, the screws that are holding the plates together do not get locked tight because they are lock nuts. So you see we have two holes here, one hole here. So it is going to be a very, very simple install. So from what I can gather on this great old instruction manual is we are going to take this plate. We are going to basically do this with it. We are going to fish all of this up into the helicopter and then we are going to line this up i'm sorry if you guys can't really see it all that great i'm doing my best so we're going to want to get that one started and then you're going to want to fish the bottom lock nut into place which is proving to be pretty difficult there we go Okay, now you got that one to start. And then the other ones are going to be easy. Just go ahead and lock them down. So we are running the last screw in. Go ahead, tighten and tighten. Now all these screws are tight. And 
This is what you will get when you are done. You're gonna have your carbon plate, two in the middle, one in the front, and your tensioner idler pulley is going to be facing the back of the helicopter, pulley facing up, and then now we can go ahead and mount the tail boom on. So now it is time to install the tail boom. So we're gonna pull on the belt, make sure it's straight. You can look down inside the boom, make sure you have those twists. So now, once we pull hard on this belt, we're gonna rotate, I'm holding the boom in my hand, and we're gonna rotate to the right because the rotor spins clockwise and the tail spins counterclockwise. So now that we know we have the proper rotation, we can go ahead and slide this assembly up into here. And we're gonna wanna get it onto the belt or onto the pulley. And we have it all hooked up now. So now, or we have it just on, we're gonna grab one of our screws with, of course, Loctite. You can add just a tiny bit more. I like to add Loctite, let it soak and go through the screw. And then you are going to just simply and carefully pull this back, get your first screw started. All right, grab your next one. You're gonna have four of these. Get it with some Loctite. Get a good amount on there so we can run down through all the threads. Go ahead and run that screw down. Now you can, you can snug these up. Don't 100% lock them down yet. Let's just get them pretty, pretty snugged up. Let's flip the helicopter over. All right, and I don't think you guys can see the last two screws, but I'm gonna get the last two screws installed. Now let's go back, snug them up. Remember, not overkill. Don't wanna break the screws off and or strip threads. Snug all four screws up. Loctite is going to do its job. Now we are good to go to move on to the back and tighten the belt up. So now we got the boom on. We're looking at the belt really loose, but this is the best time to see, make sure you have it the correct direction. So remember the rotor is gonna spin clockwise and the tail should spin counterclockwise. So that's how you know it is right. So now we could go ahead, tension it back here. You're gonna pull these two screws on each side. You're gonna pull that back to tension the belt, lock those back down with some Loctite, and we can move on to the next step, which is, oh, here's, here's how to tail belt tension. So this will give you a great idea on how to tension the belt, about what to do, loosen the red, the yellow, move it back and forth, and then we can move on to this bottom plate here, the lower frame side doubler. All right, so I was gonna try to video doing this, but it's gonna be very difficult. The video I've already tried a couple times and it's just not gonna come out. So I'm gonna explain the process. So you're gonna be tensioning the belt with a zigzag motion. So the manual will tell you to loosen the bolt on this side first, then this one, then this one. This one will be a little bit loose and you're gonna grab and twist sideways, lock, these three down, and then you're gonna go ahead, keep this one loose, lock this one down, keep this one and this one loose, then loosen this one, twist it back this way, and then just repeat, and you're gonna continuously do this until you get a good tension on the belt. So I'm gonna get that done and then show you the tension. All right, so with working, so basically you're gonna leave these two screws loose, one on each side of the back. You're gonna leave this one loose, and then you're gonna loosen this one, pull it back, twist it, lock this one down, pull it back, twist it to the right like a zigzag. So you're gonna go step, zigzag back and forth and locking each one down as you go until you tighten the belt up to a good, good tension. You can feel it, that's a good tension. No binding, everything is free. I personally think that this is a very, not the best way to do a belt. I, I don't like it, but I guess it works. And you can see there's the tensioner slash idler. I wouldn't call it a tensioner. I would just call it an idler pulley. But also make sure that your servo wire is completely free of this belt on the inside, which you can't really see, but just make sure it's free and clear of the belt. So now let's move on to the lower frame side installation. So now we're gonna move on to the lower frame assembly. You're gonna have this little carbon fiber plate. 
and they are going to tell you in the manual to glue these little lock nuts in. And mine came glued in, they're tight, you don't need to do that. But you'll notice this little plate down here, you're going to have your little carbon fiber tray. You're going to have your lock nuts are going to face towards the front of the helicopter. I already have Loctite on my screws. Going to run one down, grab the next screw, which already has Loctite. You guys know the drill, always Loctite your screws. Run the next one down. Tighten them both up, and then your lock nuts will be facing the nose of the helicopter towards the inside. So now we're going to tighten that down. Now we're going to grab the lower frame sides and get those on. So now we're going to grab our bottom plates, which are incredible quality. Look at that carbon fiber. They look good. But you're going to notice there's two cutouts on the side, and then you got two whole slots in the top. So now the blue side is going to go on the blue side of the tail boom. So it's going to be just this simple. They are going to, you're going to have your beauty ring on your screw. No Loctite on the back ones, but Loctite on the top ones. So just go ahead, get that one started. Grab your next one. Get it started. Snug them up. Don't tighten them too much, just snug them. Now, you're gonna grab your screws for the top side. You're gonna run Loctite on those. And then, M2 by 10, M2. Okay, make sure there's two different sizes, which is something I just realized. There's shorts and longs, okay? The shorts are gonna go in the back here, so we'll have to double check these, and the longs are gonna go in the top. So there's 10 millimeter and eight millimeter. So just double check your size before you get started. That's something I overlooked. So then you're just gonna run these screws in here like this. With light pressure, push down while you tighten these up. Start with the backs. I did fix it and put the, I only had one short and one long. So I put the two shorts in and then on the top, I found it the easiest to start the screws first and then slide your cover down, tighten it up and then do the same with the other side. Tighten this one up and then go to the other side and do the exact same. And then we can start on oops, sorry, the landing gear. So we'll finish snugging this one up so you guys can see the finished product. It's going to look like this. You got your screws in the top and your screws in the back. Now we're going to flip it over and do the other side. We're going to go ahead and get started on landing gear. The kit comes with the black landing gear. David wanted me to use white landing gear, so we're going to go with the white and keep the black landing gear still in the bag for David because we don't need to open this, so we'll set that aside. We're going to just go ahead and open up our white landing gear, get this unpackaged. We're going to have our little front canopy mount, get that open, get everything open, and then we'll start assembly. We're going to grab one of our skids, and we are going to grab our canopy mount. So now your canopy mount is going to sit inside of here like this. So your SAB logo is going to face down, your screw holes are gonna go from the bottom through, so you're gonna grab a 1.5 millimeter driver, I believe, and I'm wrong, it is a two millimeter driver. So grab yourself a two millimeter driver, you're gonna have these little screws, and you're going to screw it together. Now there's no, between the two of them, there's no right or wrong one on which one you use. You can literally use either one, pick one, designate it for the front, and that is going to be your front. So you're gonna literally just take these screws, put them in all four holes, and then we'll be back with gluing the ends and the skid pipes. All right, so now we got our skid pipes here. Now you're gonna have your little end caps, okay? And these little end caps push in here, and if you guys have been watching the channel, you already know the deal and you know how I do this. But now you can just push these in, but eventually they're gonna pop out. So what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of medium CA and just go ahead and put a dab of CA around the inside. Then you're gonna take your skid pipe in and you're just going to push this together. And then once you get that pushed together, just go ahead and push it and lock it in. And sometimes they are a pain. Just like that, you got your front one and your rear one installed. So again, you're gonna do the same thing with this skid pipe and then we'll move on to sliding the pipes and assembling the skids. Now that we got both skid pipes done, we got the 
ends in them, which I will tell you guys, these were the hardest ends I've ever put in on a set of skids pipes. Those were ridiculously tight. They're not going anywhere. So now what I like to do before I go ahead and slide the skid pipes in is you're going to notice that on the side holes here, you're going to have your set screw side. So your set screw is going to go one set screw here and one set screw here. So what I like to do is before I assemble it, I like to go ahead and just get this set screw started. So you're just going to start it with some pressure. It can be a little bit of a pain to get started, get it started and then just run this set screw in. Keep an eye on the hole because you don't want it to go through yet. So we want to run it in. So about here where we're flush on this side, nothing on the inside. And we're going to do the same on the other three sides and then we can assemble the pipes or the skids. Now, I personally don't like to put the pipes on yet until I get the actual skids mounted on the model. So we're going to grab the rear. This is the rear because we don't have the canopy mount on it. And it is going to be just as easy and simple as sliding it onto here like this and putting a screw in. Now I got the screw here, blue Loctite, of course. I'm going to try to do this where you guys can see it and I can see it too. So it's just going to be one screw on each side, two millimeter driver. You're just going to simply run that screw down like this, do the other one, and then do the same for the front, and we'll be back with putting the pipes in. Now the helicopter is sitting on its skids. So two millimeter driver, tighten these two on each side, tighten them up. Now uh, for putting the little plastic canopy mount on, I don't think I touched on it, no Loctite, no CA or nothing because you're screwing into plastic. And when you're running these little set screws in at the bottom of the skids, no need to put anything on them because, again, you're screwing into plastic. So we're going to grab our, our uh, skid pipes here. And now if you notice, they say SAB Heli Division on both sides of the skid pipe. And when you flip them over, they're both same, so it doesn't matter which one goes on which. Sometimes some helicopters will have the writing only on one side, not the other side. So you're just going to slide this through here like this. Okay, and you're just going to push it through. And make sure that your screw's not in all the way because what will happen is if your screw is in too far and you're pushing this pipe through, number one, it's going to be tight. Well, we know our screw's not in all the way, but number two, it's going to scratch the crap out of your skid pipe. And you don't want scratched up skid pipes. Those are just the little things that really drive me nuts. I know some people don't care, but I do. So we're going to push this all the way through. Uh, if you're having a hard time, you can use a little bit of soapy water helps. So we're just gonna leave this one in here. We're gonna leave it loose. We're not gonna do nothing. We're not gonna tighten these set screws down. We're gonna get the other pipe in and then I'll show you what we got. The other skid pipe in, both skids of pipe are in. I eyeballed them, they look pretty straight. So now we're just gonna grab ourselves a ruler. All right, my trusty old ruler I stole from grandpa years ago. Sorry, Grant. Uh, <laughs> I love this ruler because I've had this thing for years. I stole it from grandpa and I've been using it ever since. But we're gonna go to the back here and we're gonna measure from the back of the skid okay to the tip of the end cap and we're going to take a measurement right now we're just shy of an inch and a half and we're going to measure the other side and we're way at an inch and a quarter so we're a quarter inch off so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and set this back skid pipe to an inch and a half and then i'm going to lock this one down and then i'm going to set the other one to an inch and a half that way, I know that my skids are even front to back. And then when we go to the front, we're gonna set the angle because one thing that drives me absolutely nuts is a helicopter that the skids are off. I, it's just a pet peeve of mine. And it's so easy and simple to do. You just measure just like that. Measure from the back of your skid to the tail of your pipe. And then you get an even look on both sides so it's proportioned you don't have too much sticking out the front and you don't have too much sticking out the back now we know we're at an inch and a half now we can sit there look at the very front of the skid pipe here get your angle right you can measure from distance to distance here to here get a measurement really I eyeball it and I am pretty much dead on every time and then you just go ahead you just lock these set screws down into place and you're done so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and part four off here. It's a long video already. We covered a lot of the build. I know it doesn't really look like a lot, but it's just a lot of steps. This, this helicopter has more steps to the build than the raw 580. Uh, we're only going to have one more episode after this part five. We will get the FBL mounted, run all the wires, get it set up, 
And then I'm going to make a separate video for you guys about programming the hobby wing because some of you asked about it and I forgot to film a video when I did the raw. So I'm going to program the hobby wing. I'm not going to make a video on setting up the uh, icon because I've already got a video on setting up an icon. If you guys want me to make a, a separate video for setting up the icon just for this, I can do that. Let me know in the comments. But I'm going to end part four off here. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Take care. And have a great day.